Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomix. This time I will show you how to analyze a leaf spring. It might seem easy, but when you try to achieve consistency with hand calculations, you will see that it's not so trivial. Uh, since the finite element models tend to be too stiff and it's really hard to meet the assumptions of the analytical solution. Uh, so let's define a uh, model first. I will specify the 3D model space and the Fulton system. And now instead of importing geometry, I will import the mesh. Uh, since the mesh was prepared in Gmesh, uh, I will tell you um, why it had to be done this way. Uh, that's because, um, like I said, uh, this case is really uh, difficult uh, to um, achieve agreement with analytical uh, calculations and uh, it's very sensitive to um, boundary conditions, uh, contact definitions and uh, mesh uh, as well. And in this case you may notice that I'm using uh, just a single layer of hex elements in the fixedness direction so for both parts. So if, for example if I um, show the pin only you will see that there's just one uh, element in this fixedness direction and the same for, um, for the spring. And that's because uh, if you um, if you use the, the same mm, geometry mm, and the same settings mm, as I do here and uh, only change the mesh, so for example add more layers of hex elements or use that elements instead or for example or use any, any other type of, of element than uh, quadratic uh, hexahedrons, uh, you will notice that the results will change significantly, they will be mm, much uh, stiffer. So uh, this case is very sensitive to the mesh and for some reason only a single layer of hex, uh, second order hex elements in the thickness direction works uh, properly. Uh, if you add more layers of those elements uh, the, the results won't be correct and uh, this is qu quarter of the whole model so double symmetry will be used and uh, I will just show you how mm, the geometry itself looks like it was designed in FreeCAD mm, I just had to merge the uh, layers because initially they were s separate but uh, it was really hard to mm, define proper contacts interactions between them uh, and because of that I decided to merge them and uh, this is also to get closer to an analytical solution. So only pin is separate and there are two parts, pin and, and spring itself. And when it comes to meshing, I will show you um, how it was done in, in Gmesh. It, it was done in a very similar way as um, in the one of the previous tutorials uh, when I sh showed you how to um, prepare the hex mesh in Gmesh uh, for um, simple rectangular beam. In this case I also use extrusion, so um, I defined uh, I have to Im import the, the face uh, only the, the single face like this and then mm, I extruded uh, this face along with the mesh uh, and uh, with proper settings I got uh, those uh, hex elements uh, with only single mm, element in the thickness direction mm, and uh, you can see that the mesh is not perfect it could be more structured but uh, it, it's sufficient for this case and uh, even if the mesh is more structured uh, you still need to use a single layer of elements so this effect still uh, this effect is, is still uh, applicable to even when uh, mesh is uh, of better quality uh, but th this should this is sufficient for, for this case and uh, I will um, share the um, geo file, the, the script here, uh, so you will see how to um, define this mesh uh, and you won't have to um, guess. You will see that um, you need to define one layer, uh, specify the number of, uh, of elements uh, around the, the whole uh, edge of the um, of the face and so on and you will then you will need also need to uh, define physical volume to export only solid elements. Uh, but uh, one thing that is not present in this geo file is uh, settings of the meshing mesher algorithm so um, I will show you how, how you can define them uh, basically you need to change the to the algorithm to automatic and uh, then you need to um, select or combine all triangular meshes and specify all quads here uh, then uh, second order because we are using second order elements and you also need to select use incomplete elements because by default when you select second order and not this option uh, Gmesh will export elements with 27 nodes and uh, for calculix we need 20 nodes so to get C3D 20 elements uh, uh, we need to Mm, select this option and then you can export to, to the input file and import to prepomix. Uh, so that's uh, how we can obtain this mesh mm, and now let's define uh, the, analysis, the necessary analysis features. So uh, like in most cases it will be uh, steel, um, properties of, of steel and uh, I will also define a section. Uh, I will assign it uh, to the whole uh, model so both pin and, and spring uh, are assumed to be made of the same material. And now mm, I need to pr I can proceed to, to contact interactions. Mm, that's a very important part here, uh, so it has to be done uh, carefully. And uh, first, I will define a surface interaction, uh, surface behavior, so behavior in, in the nor normal direction. And instead of default hard behavior, I will use tight contact. So we use this one once uh, uh, when we are talking about connections between shell and, and solid elements. 
uh, I will just change the value of the slope of the pressure over closure curve uh, because um, th th this case is also sensitive to, f to that and um, I have to change it. Uh, I will use the value based on um, based on the Young's modulus. Uh, so um, that that's how you can select it. But uh, you need to run some tests and then see, uh, compare of with the analytical solution. That's that's why also analytical solutions are very important. And then you can adjust the, um, the, s the slope properly to, to match the um, analytical calculations. Uh, this is basically the stiffness of the springs used for, uh, to model contact. Uh, then I'm also specifying um, friction. Uh, friction coefficient here is not necessary, so I can set it to 1. And then the stick slope, uh, and this one will also based um, on the Young's modulus, uh, it is um, recommended by the documentation that it should be uh, smaller than uh, the slope of the pressure of a closure curve. Uh, so um, I will use the uh, following value for, for this uh, parameter. Mm, and uh, I should also mention that uh, if for some reason you want to model no separation contact, which is available, for example, in Abacus, uh, but not in, uh, in Calculix, uh, then you can specify very low stick slope, like uh, let's say uh, 1 E minus 7, and uh, with tight contact setting and proper uh, slope, uh, proper slope um, of this pressure of the closure curve, uh, so proper spring stiffness, um, you will also be able to model uh, no separation contact even though there's no such uh, predefined tool uh, for that. So um, basically just select, uh, just use tight contact and uh, very low stick slope. But in this case we'll use the, the following stick slope and this will be fine for, for our uh, scenario. Uh, so now mm, I can use the tool to uh, find contact pairs. I will just uh, select uh, contact here and no no adjustment and I will search for contact pairs and I can use this one. I will just uh, swap master and uh, slave assignments. So mm, I want to, uh, to I want the spring face to be the master one uh, and can accept this. Uh, and now uh, I just need to define an analysis step. This will be static step with default settings. Uh, and now I will specify um, boundary conditions and uh, load. Uh, like I said, this case uh, utilizes symmetry uh, in two planes actually, so we will need to define um, uh, two uh, symmetry boundary conditions, mm, but uh, there will be some additional uh, boundary conditions as well. So mm, let's define the first boundary condition. Uh, I will apply it to the whole pin, so mm, I can hide the mesh. Uh, so I will select the um, pin uh, and I will specify uh, on the condition in the vertical direction. So I want, don't want the pin to, to move uh, upwards and then downwards. Uh, so let's confirm this mm, and uh, now uh, additional boundary conditions. Mm, now I will select uh, the face of the pin here. Uh, then also mm, this face and together with this one. So mm, I use uh, basically symmetry boundary condition on this side as well because I want also want to, to keep the uh, the pin mm, inside and I don't want to move it uh, in this uh, x direction. So I will select this first degree of freedom, and um, this will constrain the, the motion of, of the mm, both the side of the pin here and the whole side of the model in the x direction. Uh, so now mm, the next boundary condition, the last one actually, uh, is you can as you can see. Apart from the symmetry in, in this direction, we also have symmetry in this direction. So uh, I will select this face here and uh, specify uh, constraint in uh, second direction, the y-axis. And this will also serve as a symmetry boundary condition. Mm, and now uh, I just need to define load. So mm, let's select uh, surface traction. I will apply it to this face here and uh, I will use the value of uh, 500 newtons. Uh, this will be applied in, in the y z direction and it will be applied upwards. Uh, so mm, force will be basically uh, making the, the spring unbent, let's say. Uh, so th that's, uh, that's the assumption here and that's how I want it to work. So now I can submit the analysis. Uh, the mesh is not uh, very mm, fine, so uh, and we also, especially since we use the just a single layer in the thickness direction, uh, so the analysis won't, won't take long, and uh, you will see the results uh, soon. As you can see, the results are already available, so let's uh, check them. And uh, in this case, uh, I'm interested in uh, just in, in the deflection of the spring. So mm, I can select uh, true scale here and to see the actual deformation. Uh, of course, I can uh, always uh, animate this or, or just switch between frames and, and see how the spring deforms. Uh, and now mm, I can select the right uh, component of the displacement. Mm, and now 
uh, we don't need to use the, the query tool so since you can see the, um, the value uh, maximum value of the displacement here and uh, what I want to um, to do is compare with analytical solution uh, so um, let's let's check the analytical solution here uh, this uh, uh, this is rather simple formula uh, is based on derivation from mm, the theory of, of uh, simply supported beam and in general beam bending uh, it's based on uh, equations that relate uh, the f beam deflection uh, bending moment of course uh, uh, and uh, radius of, of curvature so mm, that's how you can derive this, this formula I also uh, included the sources so if you want to know more about uh, the theory behind those leaf springs and how they, they mm, can be analyzed, treated like like, a, like composite beams, because this is essentially mm, simply supported beam uh, whose uh, section is um, composed of multiple layers, and we uh, account for the number of layers by uh, using n, which is which stands for for the number of leaves. Uh, then I also have the length of the span actually of the whole spring mm, between the distance between the center of of each eye, uh, and then I have um, the uh, the width of, of uh, each leaf and the thickness of, of the spring. Uh, so mm, that's uh, what, uh, what I need to uh, calculate the deflection and here you can see the value of the deflection is around 23 uh, millimeters and if we want if we go back to, um, to the analysis you can see uh, that we have uh, very good uh, agreement uh, with analytical solution. And uh, this case really sh proves that uh, if you do some tests uh, you will see that uh, it's really hard to, to get um, good agreement with uh, analytical calculations uh, and you need to be really careful when it comes to assumptions of the analysis uh, to, if you want to um, obtain good agreement you need to um, carefully select uh, contact settings boundary conditions and also uh, mesh uh, so that's mm, what needs to be taken care of uh, if you want to obtain accurate results not too stiff uh, for, for such a mm, rather simple case but uh, tricky uh, when it comes to uh, comparison with uh, analytical calculations. Uh, that's it for this uh, pre-programming tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.